Now, I have some sulfur here in a little dish floating on this cork. I'll just move out the, uh, move the rose out of the way. In fact, we'll take another rose and use it for this experiment. We'll put this rose in here. Notice the green coloration in the water. Well, this is actually the cabbage water that's been made, well, to react, as we saw over there, with ammonia, with an alkaline gas, it goes green. It starts off normal cabbage water from the cabbage itself would be red, but with an alkaline it goes green, so we've put some of that in the bottom of the tank, and we may be able to detect a change in the water. We're going to burn the sulphur, if I can spot the... There it is, yep. Lower the lighter here. So I'm going to set the sulphur on fire, so remember it's burning stone, brimstone... Oops. So my sulphur is now burning. I'm going to put this jar on top of it. And this is because when sulphur burns, it gives out a rather nasty choking gas called sulphur dioxide. So the sulphur seems to be burning quite nicely. The sulphur dioxide is actually very heavy, much heavier than air, so it's gradually filling up the jar here. But we'll put the lid on before any of it gets out. So the sulphur here is burning and it's forming sulphur dioxide. Now why have we put a rose in here? One of the properties of sulphur dioxide is that it bleaches roses and colours. So the colour of the red colour of the rose here will become bleached over time. In fact, this was the rose that we put in earlier. It started off exactly the same, this beautiful red rose. This is one that went in ammonia. This is one that went into the chamber here with sulphur dioxide. Now, I said that we should be able to detect a colour change as well in the water. We'll have to keep an eye on that. But the chemical reaction that we have occurring here, the sulphur, the burning stone here, the sulphur is reacting with the oxygen that's in the air, in this container, forming sulphur dioxide gas. Now, with extra oxygen, sulphur can form sulphur trioxide. In fact, um, this method here used to be used to form sulphur trioxide and indeed sulfuric acid, by adding a little bit of saltpetre to provide some extra oxygen and a, a catalyst to form the sulphur trioxide. But I think somebody's had a good whiff of ammonia there. <laughs> Remember, smelling salts, so don't faint. Anyway, so sulphur trioxide reacting with water gives us the sulfuric acid. So here's the uh, chemistry here, and this used to be how sulfur uh, sulfuric acid was made. Sulphur would be burnt in a, a big jar like this, with a little bit of saltpetre in there, would form sulphur trioxide, but the sulphur trioxide reacts with the water and forms sulfuric acid, or hydrogen sulphate. So now we've made our sulfuric acid that we used at the start with our iron to generate the hydrogen by a nice natural method here, by burning our sulphur. <laughs>